Hey guys, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. Today we're going to figure out how does vision, hand speed, trigger, and size of the target all to come together to allow you to shoot at your highest level. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combat, and this is your Man is Dry Fire Monday, and you're on active self-protection. I've written down some stuff on a board here, which you may or may not be able to see, but I'm a coach, I can't help it. I need a board to write and refer to, apparently that helps me do this in a better manner. Um, we've been talking about vision, we've been talking about trigger speeds, we've been talking about how to move your hands and how much you need to see. The problem with all that is it's isolations. Uh, everybody wants to get technically isolate in each, each portion of this and what it means is that you don't have synergy, you don't have a combination where the parts become, come together and make the whole greater. Uh, the parts are important and we do that in isolation and learn how to micro drill, but then we have to start putting it together. So hopefully this will help you a little bit. Uh, I talked about vision and opening up your vision and using the peripheral or panorama vision. And somebody asked me about where should their eyes be focused. Your eyes should be focused on the center of the target. But when I say focus, they're just holding focus there. They're not dilating in super hard into a detailed focus, the foveal cone. What we're doing is seeing everything around it from side to side also. So we have what's called from Joan Vickers the quiet eye. It is settled. It is not moving around the target anymore. And we're looking at the center of it. Okay, but we're also seeing everything else. Then what's going to happen is the target's going to tell me how fast I have to do things. And how does the target do that? Well, either the target is larger or smaller, or it's at a greater distance and it appears smaller. Something's in the way making it smaller, or it's moving, you're moving, or you're both moving, and therefore the dwell time when you can actually press the trigger is very limited. Uh, motion exists all the time in shooting. Uh, I'm not against people using a reticle only style shooting system. The problem for me is I shoot a lot of quick things and a lot of motion and I find the big circle extremely hard. Whether you have a 6 MOA or a 2.5 OMA doesn't really matter to me as long as you understand it. Uh, the, the larger dot will draw your attention better. Uh, the smaller dot may add some refinement but whether you can actually take advantage on it is relative to your skill level. We don't know. If you have iron sights, I would suggest that the front sight be brightly colored and the back sights be black. So have a fiber optic, have a painted front sight, have a big green or orange uh, tritium insert to draw the eyes so that you can do this. Okay? So the target's told me how fast I can shoot, so that's my walkthrough. I, I know that I either have to get a chest shot or a head shot or an ocular shot, and I know how hard those targets are, so I'm going to modulate my hand speed, which is the H, and this is HVT, doesn't stand for high value target. Uh, it's just an acronym that I use to help remember to teach and get people to do. And the hands is how fast are they going to stop. They should always be moving as fast as they can unless it's a surreptitious draw. There's a very limited opportunity for that, maybe with a tail gun or a robbery uh, situation. But mostly we're going to draw the gun as quickly as we can because for us it's either, uh, it's most likely to be an ambush or we see the fight coming. The other thing is vision. How much motion will I accept from the aiming system on the target? Uh, we are always shooting in motion. There's never a time where everything's still. And to chase stillness as a human being means that you refute your ability to actually live like you do. What you're doing is you're always going to be in motion. If you don't believe me, hold your finger up. Try to hold it absolutely still. The muscular system works on frequency, not amplitude, and you can't squeeze harder to make it stiller. So you're going to accept some motion. But the size of the target will tell you how much is acceptable because the aiming process will either be in the target or out. And then the final thing is the trigger speed. How do I prep the trigger? If it's a very small target, I have to be extremely careful and prep the trigger well. If it's a larger target, it requires no prep whatsoever and I can bang away on it. Now what's going to happen is our sights come in from the top and if we've really trained hard, it's going to be a predictable, repeatable index. If we haven't, we're going to be in a reactive uh, methodology where we have to clean up the sights. Okay? A lot of iron sight shooters really have a hard time with the dot because it shows them motion they didn't think existed and also makes them clean up their presentation more because otherwise it doesn't work at all. I think that's a good thing 
but it's relative to how much you practice. If you don't practice very well and you don't, you're not very good at drawing anyway, then having a red dot may not be the right choice for you because you need to have a more gross picture that you can fix at the end. But it will cost you time. You're going to be slower that way. All right. So as the sites come in, they're dropping from 12 o'clock if I've done everything right, but maybe it comes in from one o'clock. No problem. What's going to happen is it's going to be a squiggle in here. There's no circle. There's no figure eight. What I do is constantly refine it. If you get on your Manus X and look at the, the wonderful bar graph or the graphing matrix will show you how you aim and how you prep the trigger, what happens when you press the trigger and what happens in, during recoil. That's where the really good knowledge is. Don't care about the, the point value system. That's what tells me what human beings really aim like and what it looks like. As long as it's inside the target, we're gonna call it good enough. And that's what you gotta get comfortable with. In the center, the center does not yield extraordinary results, okay? We don't know what's gonna happen when bullets hit flesh. They can go anywhere, they can bounce off things. Angle of deflection matters. So we're going to say anywhere inside the target is good enough, all right? And as long as it's good enough, then the sight will lift from that position allowing me to call the shot as good enough instead of looking at the target. So I've got to slow the hands down appropriately to the size of the target. Vision, I have to accommodate enough, or really I have to allow enough uh, motion in it to get a good enough hit, and I need to prep the trigger at a speed that is consistent with the size of the target, and I have to keep my eye vision open so I can see more than just the place that I'm focused at. Uh, as I travel the country teaching folks, what I find is most people are not shooting a dot in target focus, they're still shooting it in dot focus, and they're looking at it. So use some methodologies like taping the front of the optics so you can see if you're looking at the target. Your stereoscopic vision will allow the dot to appear on the target if you're using both eyes. If you're still not doing that, you're going to see blue tape only. Uh, the other thing is if you can see your lens, you can see the cowling, you can see dust spots, you are dot focused. And one of the problems that I have with the larger reticle size is it does draw the eye to it. It's like blooming up your own sights. You have to look through it. Uh, if you have a two or six MOA, it doesn't really matter as long as you can take advantage of it. I don't like the reticle for motion shooting, but it is great to lay on circular targets. But I wonder if it forces us back to a bit of reticle focus in that, that situation. Don't know, can't prove it. Uh, I know what it does to me and that's what I can speak to. Now when I'm on the line, if I think somebody's dot focused, I'll look for this motion. If I see the head drop and I see tension around the eyes, they're probably accommodating back to the dot instead of looking at the target. Allow the motion to tell you how much is good enough. If I have an iron sight and it's brightly colored and it's floating inside the back window, I can simply press the trigger. I don't need to center it and make it perfect as long as it's inside the target and I can recognize that. I, I like to have a clear focus on the target and a blurry front sight and a blurry back sight because otherwise I get visual doubling, which means I have to shoot the one that's on the right and that's not really a good way to shoot. So I tend to be target focused even when I'm shooting irons. Okay. So remember, size of the target dictates how fast your hands and your vision and your trigger go. Your aiming can be in three categories, which is deliberate, you become a human bench rest and you don't move, you hold it to as minimum amount of motion as you can. Can be reactive, something slightly long, so we got to correct it, it'll cost you about 0.2. Or it can be uh, predictive that my basics and fundamentals are so good so I can see where it's going and as it enters the target I can press the trigger. Okay, eyes centered, but open and relaxed. Hands stop at the appropriate speed. Vision is related to motion, accept the motion, work through it, and then the trigger, the prep is relative to the size of the target and how much error it will allow. I hope that helps you with this. This is complicated, guys, because we're not talking about guns. We're not talking about iron sights. We're not talking about red dot. We're talking about you. We're talking about the way you perceive things in, in the world and what you're willing to do. Uh, I've changed a lot of people's minds about shooting because one of the things that I tell them is, uh, you know, a lot of people come to the range and have shot clays or they've hunted, shot birds and stuff like that. And I ask them where they aim, they say in front of it. 
So shouldn't we be getting ahead of our own aiming system and being in front of it in a predictive motion that allows us to shoot better? We must accept that motion will exist no matter how still we think we are. We will never have the perfect stance, the perfect grip, the perfect posture to allow the dot or the front sight to stay absolutely still. We accept it and then we recognize on an intuitive basis of what good enough is. Remember, your intuition is a recognition prime decision-making machine, according to Gary Klein, and therefore it allows you to make very fast judgments in what is good enough. And the tr more you train this, the more you accept this, the quicker that you can make good enough decisions and you realize I'm either shooting deliberately, reactively, or predictively. Boy, that's a lot of information, guys. And it is confusing and there's some other videos that you can go through it. Everybody wants to isolate to one thing, but what we're looking for is synergy in our shooting. The ability that the parts become greater together than they are individual and that's what allows us to shoot well and consistently and accurately and efficiently and this is the definition of discipline i've trained myself to accept these things and know what good enough is use your manus guys look at the look at the aiming part of it watch how you aim recognize the pattern and then when you're shooting watch to see if the same thing happens and you will improve quickly that way Okay, quit chasing the numbers. Watch the graph. It's going to tell you the truth about who you are and how you aim. Okay, guys, I hope you appreciate that. I hope it works out for you. I'm Brian Hill with The Complete Combatant. This is Active Self-Protection Extra. And as always, measure, refine, and perform.